Rick Leventhal is a veteran news reporter who has been on the scene for some of the biggest stories of the last 35 years. He spent 24 years at Fox News Channel, where he covered the wars in Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya. And he was one of the first reporters at Ground Zero when the Twin Towers came down on 9-11. He's got a brand new book out, just out this very week. It's called Chasing Catastrophe. And he's here to tell us all about it. Please welcome to the show a former colleague of mine from Fox News, Rick Leventhal. There are few reporters that I know who have been in the center of some of the biggest news stories of the past 35 years. I'm glad you wrote the book because you were an eyewitness to some of the things that we all saw, read about, knew were happening, but you really were there. I, I feel very privileged to have done what I did, to have been a, a witness to history on the front lines of so many incredible events. Um, some of them were, were tragedies, but it was still an honor to be able to, to, to be there to report on it for the public, to, to boil it down and, and, and make it understandable for people and show them all the best and worst of humanity and when it was happening. Rick, I remember on 9-11, all of us were tuned and glued to the television, but I remember when the towers fell and you were there, one of the few reporters that had gotten in position that quickly. And I'll never forget seeing you covered in soot from head to toe, absolutely unrecognizable, just yeah. covered with the dust of what had just happened. That must have been the most harrowing thing you ever covered. Without question. I have chills right now. Uh, being there that day, I've, I've carried it with me every day since. And I had just picked up the microphone, and my photographer, who was actually the engineer in the, in the satellite truck, had just picked up the camera maybe 30 seconds before that first tower fell. And so we were among the people who were running up Church Street to get away from this 200-foot-tall smoke cloud and took refuge in his truck. And after a few minutes, when everything went dark, and then once we realized that we, it was probably safe to go outside, we did. And, and there was that moon dust that you're talking about yeah. covering everything. And it was uh, obviously the worst day of my life, but uh, and, and the most challenging thing I ever had to do, to stay calm and report on it. How do you separate your own feelings? You're, you're supposed to be telling the rest of us what's happening yeah. and to do it without coming apart emotionally. And I'm not sure how you pull that That's off. That's a great question. I have no idea. I, do, I mean, <laughs> I, mean I, I, really? I, just, I had some sort of filter, you know, mm -hmm. that I developed over the years of doing yeah. local news for 10 years. And, you know, I would just separate myself from, from the harshness of it, from the worst of it, the reality of it, and just try to focus on, on the facts, what we knew and what I could report without um, reporting rumors or innuendo, trying to keep it as real as I could and just, just you know, bring the facts to the public. At, at the worst possible moment in my life. You, you covered so many stories, some of which were human tragedies, others which were international tragedies. You went to a lot of war zones, I right did. in the middle of the combat. Yeah. Was there ever a moment where you tried to sleep and you said, if I go to sleep, I may never wake up? No, but there was a moment when I was in Libya when I, it was time to wake up and there were bombs dropping all around us. Gaddafi was attacking Benghazi and I was in a hotel room trying to sleep and I remember taking my pillow and putting it over my head to try and drown out the noise of all the bombs that were going off, you know, outside our hotel because I just was so desperate to get some sleep. Um, but, you know, I eventually woke up and, and went to work uh, and we had to flee the city and come back hours later. But I mean, obviously there were a lot of dangerous moments, a lot of times that were that tested us. Uh, drove into an ambush um, in Iraq uh, for 45 minutes, full on firefight. But you know, I was surrounded by really brave Marines. And now, now was that the firefight that Hillary was in with you? <laughs> Absolutely the Marine. But was that the firefight that Hillary was running away from the, uh, I, never mind. I, you know, she still tells that story that she was in the middle of that. But I don't you really see were. Her. No, I, I didn't see Hillary. Okay, I, no. I just wanted to uh -uh. clarify that. No. But, you know, I, I don't think a lot of people understand that when, you, when you're a reporter, in order to get the story, you have to go into places that, frankly, none of us would ever want to go into. Well, I wanted to go there. I always had my hand up to be the first out the door to go and cover these things because that's, it was in my blood. You know, I had that, that, I guess I was an adrenaline junkie yeah. and I wanted to be where the action was. 
And I loved it. I did. And I mean, I still sort of get that inkling once in a while, but it was nice to step away and spend time with my wife and not have to worry about every time the phone rang, I'd have to leave town for a day or a week or a month. Yeah. You know, but but this, the book is not just about tragedies. The book is about sort of how we got there, the, the behind the scenes stuff, some really fun stories and cool stuff that I've never told before. Stories that have, you know, never, we couldn't put on television yeah. because of the nature of the stories. But, you know, I think people will appreciate um, the 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 message in those chapters. You know, this had to be therapeutic to write a book about the catastrophes that you have chased all over the world. Yeah. Was there a time in writing the book that you said, I needed to get that out of me? For sure. And you know, I wouldn't have been able to write it if I didn't save all of my reporter notebooks. Mm. You know, I've always been yeah. accused of being a pack rat and I guess I am a little bit, but I had hundreds and hundreds of these notebooks that I would bring on assignment with me. And when I was done with them, I'd put them on a shelf or put them in a box. and. I, when I left Fox, I went through all these boxes and I had all of these new memories and stuff that I'd written down that I would have forgotten, but there they were. And I just separated them into piles and was able to come up with all these different chapters, including the hurricane chapter, which was dozens of different storms that I chased. You know, one of the things that I've always admired about you, and I mean this from my whole heart, you were a true journalist in a world where there aren't many. And there were several guys at Fox. I, I think of Steve Harrigan. I think of... Uh, uh, Catherine, um, who's no longer at Fox, she's at CBS now, Catherine Herridge. Uh -huh. There were some journalists. I had no idea what the politics that you had or some of these folks had. I had no idea whether you were left, right, middle, totally didn't care because you never let that get into the way of your story. But I don't see many people who have that professional ethic that you and a few folks had. Why are we losing that? What's happened to the field of genuine, authentic Journalist. I'm not sure, but I, I'm upset by it as well. I, I see a lot of stories that are buried, buried because of politics. I see stuff that isn't being reported because of the nature of the story, uh, because it's not meeting the agenda of the administration. And I see people who are reporting their opinions and not the facts. I never wanted to be that guy. Yeah. I always wanted to separate myself, my personal feelings, and just be right down the middle and just tell people what was happening around me. And that's one of the reasons I never wanted to cover politics because yeah. I didn't want to get political. You know, I wanted to cover real, what I consider to be real news. Well, you did it. You have done it as masterfully as anyone I've ever known. And I think that this book is going to be a wonderful insight for people. If they wonder, what does a reporter really do? Well, yeah. Rick Leventhal takes you on a 35-year journey called Chasing Catastrophe. And I hope that you will get it. Rick, thank you for being here. Thank you, And Governor. for our audience, as I say, the book is called Chasing Catastrophe. 35 years covering wars, hurricanes, terror attacks, and other breaking news. You'll get a behind-the-scenes look at the news business. How do you get the book? Pretty easy. Just came out this week. Let's make it a bestseller. Here's Thank what you. you do. Go to Huckabee.tv. We have a link to how to get the book as well as Rick's social media. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, I hope you will now. The button is just below this video, and there's a little bell next to it. If you click on those, YouTube will reluctantly start letting you know when we've got a new video uploaded.